here's another very simple to implement a chatbot with rag which you can build and self host remember to watch this from start to finish so that you don't miss anything and the code is also available to you in the description ensure that you understand this explanation really well so that you can convert this into your own chatbot system hi welcome to techy talks ai i am sri from shogni on this channel we showcase hands on demos and insights into ai automation and no code tools we have created several make.com modules to simplify no code automation for you subscribe and join us on this journey into the future of technology in this chatbot we rely on just python without any other external library so that makes it much more reliable in many ways so here is the diagram that i have created so before we go through the setup and the code let's understand the diagram so user talks to the web application which is the website of your client which will essentially be html css and javascript but on this website we embed our chatbot which is javascript and some css clear so we will have a static placeholder website and also we will have a chatbot our focus is on this chatbot clear and this entire system that is static part of the system is delivered using nginx web server which is a very popular highly scalable web server so that we call the front end we also have a proxy being handled a reverse proxy which is being handled by this nginx which will internally route the chatbot requests to a fast api based backend and this backend will have the ai chatbot system talking to open ai api it also has the vector database to handle the rag part and again here for this vector database we don't rely on any vector store third party vector store we manage our own local vector store we use open ai's embeddings for this vector store and for the rag we have a local rag knowledge base which we can easily update with the local business information so that chatbot meaningfully responds so that is the whole setup so let's first see how it works i will start the application docker compose up and wait for it to be ready so in the backend the docs folder we have the store guide on site parking is available on weekdays after 5 pm and all day saturday so let's ask this as the query this is the place holder website so the look and feel of this website is not important our focus is on this chatbot do you have parking yes we have on site parking available so, so this answer comes from the local rag knowledge base clear so this is the working so let's go from start to finish of the entire setup so this document i have created with the help of chat gpt itself luminous boutique a complete beginners walk through so let's see what we are building we are building the front end which is a stylish static website and we are using nginx then the back end which is fast api which is very popular python library and it is highly scalable in the form of microservice architecture we can scale this chat system and we use docker compose to launch the front end and the back end localhost colon 8080 is where we serve this application so here we have the folder structure remember this entire folder is available for you to download the link is in the description we have the docker compose dot yaml file this is what gets read when we execute docker compose up 
all the services are defined in this YAML. We will see this file. Then we have dot env, which you will have to create, which will contain the OpenAI API key. We have this front end folder, which contains the static website. And it also has this nginx config. Why do we need this nginx config? This nginx config is what is defining the reverse proxy to fast API endpoint. Then we have the static website, index.html, style.css, and script.js. And this script.js has our chatbot, you front end. So here is the back end. Here we have the Docker file requirements.txt has the Python libraries needed. Then in the app folder, we have the main.py, which handles the chat APIs backend. We have the data. This is where the RAG knowledge base is hand managed. Clear? Any document, you can put it here in the bottom of markdown. .env file is what you will need to edit and put your API key. You don't need to necessarily use OpenAI. Any other large language model that you have access to, you can mention that here. I am using GPT-4 Home Mini, but now that is gone. It is GPT-5-Nano is what we can use. So here we have the Docker Compose YAML file. In this file, we have two services, backend, and front end. Okay, and back end create the container from the Docker file present in the back end folder, and the front end create the Docker container using the Docker file in the front end folder. And these are the container names. And the knowledge base data gets mapped to the back end container in this way so that we can put our knowledge base in the uh, data folder. And we have the bridge network so that the proxy calls gets internally passed to the fast API backend. So we don't really need to map this port. This is only to test. After that, you can remove these lines. So here we have the Nginx config, which is used by Nginx. Any call coming to the Nginx web server with slash API slash gets forwarded to our backend. See here, internally using the internal bridge network so that we don't need to expose this port to the outside world. And the outside world will not know how we are accessing the backend. That is the beauty of this reverse proxy. And that is the front end Docker file, which is plain vanilla Nginx. And here we have the explanation for the index.html, which is the static placeholder website. And style.css, which is the styling used. Then we have the script.js, which is our chatbot logic. Here we are calling the slash API. Remember, anything starting with slash API, uh, goes to our backend. So this is the backend Python containers Docker file. And we are using UVCon to launch our application, which is main.py in the app folder. Here we have the requirements.txt, which has all the libraries that we need, including the version that we are using. And here we have the backend main.py, which gets the API key from the env file. Then we have the middleware, where you can restrict who can access this chatbot. Then the knowledge base data location, the data folder, docs, data docs folder. Then here we have defined a class which is managing the vector store. Okay, so this vector store has two components. One is indexing, which happens once, 
then we have the search. So when user types in a query, that query gets converted into an embedding and then it uses a similarity search using the vector store. Here we have the load corpus. So this is what is going through the data docs folder and looking for .txt and .md file. Essentially, all text documents from that folder gets identified and it gets saved into this text as a string. Then this is where we are loading the uh, documents into this variable and then passing that to our vector store class to index it. Okay, so it gets converted into vectors or embeddings. And this is the health check, a good practice to ensure that you can have a watchdog mechanism built around this chatbot so that you know that chatbot backend is running. Now, the very important thing is we also have an endpoint which we can call in our cron job, etc. Anytime we update the knowledge base, adding more documents, we can call this re-index so that vector store gets updated. Uh, here we have the system prompt and this build prompt get the system prompt and return this array in this format role and content. And anytime user asks anything in the chatbot like do you have parking, that query comes here. The query part gets saved into this variable and we use the vector store search method and we will pick more similar four chunks from our knowledge base. And that context gets passed to our build prompt method and we get the complete query and context that can be passed to large language model. So here we are calling the large language model. This model comes from the environment variable and this message goes here which has the top four similar chunks from the RAG knowledge base and the user query. And the response goes back as answer. And Docker Compose Bill will create both the containers. And here is our chatbot. And we have the endpoint to re-index. Let's test it. Okay, so see it says status re-indexed chunks 5. Let's also check the health endpoint. Okay, health endpoint is not post. It is get. Yeah, see, status okay. And it also returns how many chunks we have in the database. So we can call the re-index endpoint to re-index the knowledge base. We can create a cron job that runs every few minutes to ensure that chatbot is up and running. So that is a complete end-to-end -end explanation, self-hosted, powerful chatbot. See you in another video like this. Give you valuable comments and suggestions. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Your support really helps. Have ideas or suggestions? Drop them in the comments. Let's build together. At Shogani, we offer expert no-code make.com and Python AI automation consulting with ready-to-use modules to jumpstart your projects. Stay tuned and subscribe for more.